Let's understand compound interest. A good place to begin is actually simple interest. Now you may remember what simple interest is, but if I had to summarize simple interest, and in fact both simple interest and compound interest in just one line, all I'll say is simple interest is where you charge interest just on the principal. As many years pass, you don't do anything, the principal remains the same. In compound interest, as the years go by, you start charging interest also on the interest. In other words, the principal keeps growing. That's it. I know that's a one-line summary and that's not enough, so let's jump in. Let's look at an example. Let's, let's imagine that you have 1000 rupees and you decide to uh, give the bank a loan of this 1000 rupees. Uh, you can give the bank a loan, right? That, that's what we call a deposit. So you give the bank a loan, maybe you decide to keep it for three years. Now the bank says that I'm going to give you 10% for this 1000 rupees that you give me every year. So we have a big way of saying that. We say the bank is giving you 10% per annum uh, you know, percentage rate. Basically, they're just going to give you 10% of this 1000 for every year that you let them keep this money. Now, what does that mean? It means that after a year passes, they owe you not just this 1000 rupees, they owe you 100 rupees more. So they're going to give you 1000 rupees and 100. And why is it 100? Because finding 10% of 1000 is going to be easy. 10% of 1000 is just 1000 divided by 10. So it's 100. Now, what's going to happen after one more year? Are things going to change a lot? Not really, right? Everything remains the same. The principle's the same. So nothing much, nothing much happens. So let's just see what's going to happen. So let's take this again. Let's go over here. And uh, let's see what happens. So nothing much has changed. Year number one has passed, except over here it's year number two now. So it's year number two. Same 10%, same principle of 1000, same 100 rupee interest. Let's do this again for the third year. Again, nothing's going to change. You can see how predictable this is, which is why finding simple interest is really simple. You just have to multiply the interest that you get for one year by as many years as you have. And you'll get the answer. So you have year number one, year number two, and year number three have passed. How much money will you have totally at the end of this? You can notice that you're going to have your original thousand. They can't take that away from you. And then you have hundred, hundred, hundred for the three years. So that's going to be thousand plus three hundred, thousand three hundred rupees. And that's a good deal. You got three hundred rupees. Uh, when you do this, this is called simple interest. The principle does not change. But I have a question for you. The question I have is, will you take this deal? Now it seems like a good deal. Uh, but if you watch closely, you can actually find a clever way to make more money in the same, with the same conditions. And let's see what that is. Let's bring this down over here and let's see what we can do. So let us imagine now that uh, you want to make more money than 1,300. What can you do? You notice something. You tell the bank, hey, all you're telling me is that if you keep my money for one year, you'll give me 10% of whatever you've kept, right? So all I'm going to do is after a year, I'm going to withdraw my money. Give me back my money. So they have to give you. And you say, okay, that's how much How much should you give me? You have to give me 1,100 rupees. Right? Thank you very much. Now then you say, I'm just going to, this this one looks way too bad to be kept over here. 1,100. Yeah, there it is. So now I'm going to put this money back into your bank. And the bank may get a little confused, but all you're doing is saying that give me back my money and you're putting it back. You have all the rights to do that. So what does that do though? it changes something very important. It changes the principle for the next year. So 1000 is not the principle for the next year. You say it is 1100. So 1100 is the principle for calculating the interest for year number two. So it's not going to be 100, but 10% of 1100. So 100 goes, something more than 100 is going to come because your principle is increased. 10% of the principle is also increased. Now, luckily it's 10%, so it's super easy to calculate. It's just dividing this by 10. So it's 110 rupees. So you've already made 10 rupees more than what you did last year. So year number one, nothing changed. You made the same 100 by this method. But in year number two, you've made 10 rupees more. Now, of course you'll do this again, right? You'll say, wait, wait, I'm going to take this money back out again. Um, give me back my money. That's going to be 1,210 rupees now. So you have 1,210 rupees with you and you say, I'm going to put this back in again. And the bank goes, okay. Something's up over here. So you're going to give them, say that 1,210 is your new principal. I think you can see where this is going. Year after year, if you take money out and put it back in, you have a better deal because your principal keeps increasing. Over here, your principal just remains the same. So what's the interest going to be this time? It's going to be 10% of 1,210, which is 121 rupees. You're beginning to make bigger profits. Last time you made a 10 rupee profit. This time you're making 11 rupee profit on top of this. So overall, if you notice... Over this 100, you've made 21 rupees more just in the third year. So 
how much is this going to be? 1,331. Now, let's update it. We have used some cleverness to make some money. We should celebrate. Now, if you do this, where you take the money out and deposit back in again, or rather, if, if the bank says, hey, I know you can do this, uh, I'll just imagine you did it. I'll just imagine that you took it out and put it back in. If the bank makes you this deal, then it's called compound interest. Now, you may say that uh, all of this hard work to make 31 rupees more does not seem that worth it. But imagine, if this number had been bigger, let's say it was a lakh, that's that's a, that's 100 times more than 1,000. That's 100 times 1,000. So this difference over here, which is 31, will also be 100 times, which is basically 3,100 rupees. Now, that's large. Even more beautiful is when the number of years that you do this for, the number of years you keep the money in the bank, as that increases, this difference just skyrockets. Now, notice that compound interest is nothing new. Now, when you're given a problem in compound interest, you can use that formula that's there. But I mean, I personally find it much easier to just observe what's happening. And notice that this is nothing new. This is just percentage increase. Look at this. This thousand, you increase it by 10%, you get the principal for the next year. 10%, again, on this principle, you get this new number, 1,210. Increase that by 10%, you get 1,331. So it's nothing new in compound interest. All you're doing is increasing a number by a given percentage. Again and again. You do it for four years, five years, you keep doing it. That's all compound interest really is. So if you understand percentage increase, if you know how to, how to increase a number by a given percentage, and if you understand how to do it again and again, you're done. You don't need to know anything else new to do compound interest problems. One small detail here is that this compounding, right? We're doing it every year. It doesn't have to be every year. When it's a year, we call it, say that this is compounded annually because you're adding the interest back every year. If you do it every six months, in other words, if you find the interest for six months and then you add it to the principal just at six months, then it's called compounding half yearly. If you do it every uh, three months, it's called doing it quarterly. In India, many of the banks do it uh, quarterly. So if you put money into the bank, uh, if you deposit money, it's almost always compound interest that you will get. Uh, I don't know if there are cases where you put money in a bank and you get simple interest. So it's good in one way, you'll make more money. But if you do take a loan, uh, it's important to check whether it's uh, simple interest or compound interest because you'll actually end up paying much more money if it's compound interest. And you should also particularly look at the frequency of compounding. How often are they compounding? Because sometimes it's not very clear. Like you may think that they're compounding it yearly or, or monthly or something, but but some, some of these people actually compound very quickly, especially credit cards, for example. Like some of them I've seen compound every day. So if you miss one payment, the interest you pay on the interest can get much higher than you expect. And you may not even notice it. Even before you notice it, the amount's much bigger. 